efficient. Blah, blah, blah. What we're going to look at here is the conservation of energy through a gravitational perspective. Um, we're going to have to make a few adjustments to our reference positions, which we'll talk about. Uh, if you think back to gravitational potential energy with MGH, um, our reference position was a, like a zero position, something that we gave a height above or below, and that influences our sign. Um, conservation of energy, though, kind of starts the same way as it always did. Uh, the kinetic energy you had initially plus the potential energy, and I'm going to use the letter U here instead of PE if you're familiar with that. Um, that U is the potential energy. But the potential energy you have initial has to equal the final kinetic plus the final potential. Now, we're going to do something a little strange here. Um, and it's strange at first, but as we kind of work throughout this math, it's going to make a lot of sense. What we're going to do is we are going to determine a reference position because for these potential energies, we need a reference point. What we're gonna actually do, and we can thank Newton on this one, is we are going to set a position far, far away. Let's make it farther than far away. Let's make it like an infinite distance away. That's not really possible, but let's do it. Let's go, let's go all the way out to infinity, so to speak. And we're gonna call that distance out at infinity. That potential energy out here equals zero by definition. That is what we are calling it from now on. What that means is that every point just inside of infinity has a negative potential energy. And that's kind of a weird thing, like we're always dealing with negative potentials, but it actually is going to make our life extremely easy moving forward. The reason why we want these negative potentials, so to speak, is if we look at this conservation of energy equation and we rearrange it so that the kinetic energies are together and the potential energies are together, what we have is that Ki minus Kf equals Uf minus Ui. Now, this right here it's close, but it's not exactly a change in value. Uh, we can't just say this is delta K because it's not. Delta, if you remember, is a final minus an initial. What we have is a initial minus final. So what this actually is on the left side, it's a negative delta K equals, and this final minus initial on the left is delta U. Now. Let's just pause that there and think about, once again, what U could actually be, what this value here, what these actually are. If we step back and we do think about uh, gravitational potential energy with some reference point, if this is our reference down here at zero, and this is some uh, distance of height, we used to call this H for MGH. Let's now instead call it R so that this equation wouldn't read mgh, but it would read u equals mgr. Now that doesn't seem like a large change, but it is. If we think back into our gravitational unit, we have already set an equation for little g. And if we plug that equation in here, what we can see is that the gravitational potential energy, m times gm, or the larger mass, so if this is like U, this would be Earth over R squared times R. What this means is that if we look at this, one of these R's is going to cancel out, and we actually find that the potential energy is equal to G M m over r. This here gives us a nice value to place up into this delta u. But what we are going to do by our definition is recognize that we weren't going from 0 to r, uh, we were kind of going from like r to 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to set these values to negative. So it's going to be negative gmm over r. 
So in every case, the potential energy due to gravity is technically a negative gmm over r, when our reference point is all the way out to infinity. What this allows us to do is when we have negative delta k equals delta u, this negative here, we're going to bring it over. And if we expand this out again, what we'll see is that delta k equals a negative of negative gmm over our final position minus negative gmm over our initial position. And what this will do for us, which is really nice, is it's going to get rid of a lot of a negative. Um, this negative here is going to turn this into a positive value. And then when we distribute it again, this momentarily positive value is going to flip back to a negative. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have a positive value and a negative value. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to just say that delta k equals delta u. The initial, the change in the kinetic energy equals the change in the potential energy, which is what we always wanted. Uh, we just had to take this kind of weird approach to get that math to work itself out. So by doing that, uh, it saves us a little bit of headache later in the road whenever we're doing this, um, but it gives us this nice uh, values here. And um, what we can do here is we can actually expand this equation in fully then. And um, what we can say for the delta k side is this is like 1 half m and then vf squared minus vi squared. Remember those squares are on the inside, so you have to square each of those terms and then subtract. And that has to equal, and if we look at these gmm over r values, uh, this gmm is a constant for both these terms. So we can actually pull it outside, gmm, and then multiplied by 1 over the final position minus 1 over the initial position. And right there, that is our conservation of energy uh, in a full gravitational sense. It's very similar to what we did earlier on in the year, um, but this time we can go very far away from a planet. Uh, before, we were mitigated to just staying you know, within the height of a tree or so. Um, now we can put a satellite up there and say, hey, what happens if... Uh, it falls down. How much energy would it have? Um, what happens if a planet crashes to another planet? What kind of energy is there uh, just by using this equation? So that's how we can set up a conservation of energy in a gravitational sense um, just by kind of creating a new reference point all the way out at infinity, making it zero, making all of the potentials negative coming in. Uh, we can thank Newton for that. But in the end, it gives us a very nice setup as we see here. Um, with our kinetic energy, or the change in, equaling the change in the potential. And with that, conservation of energy is finished.